Hey, fourth graders, it's me, Miss Tremel, back again for day 15. Today is September 28th. It is Monday, and it's a very happy Monday, in my opinion, because I just got through with a great weekend. I hope you had a great weekend, too. I hope you're well rested and ready for today's workout. As you may notice already, I've shown you what the weekend calendar markers look like for September 26th, for September 27th, and now we have September 28th. I wonder what's going to happen. Hopefully, you're using your knowledge of what's happened earlier on the month to figure out what's going to happen today. So, let's see. Here it is. Is that what you were thinking? It's kind of like what happened on day 19 where we have no heel bones because the day before that we had nine and we know that with the ancient Egyptian numbers, they have symbols that stand for ones, tens, and hundreds. So after 90 is 100, which means we're going to have to change our symbol. So if that is what the marker is going to be for today, what does that mean our modern number is? You got it, 308. All right, let's record that. Okay, so I just recorded it on our chart here. So for September 28th, we have 308. But I also would like to record what yesterday's modern numeral was for September 27th. So let's look at that card. What's the modern numeral here? Right, 200 plus 90 plus 7. So, 297. So let's record that as well. Okay, which means we also need Saturday, which is September 26th. So let's look at that card and see if we can figure out what the modern numeral is for that day. Great, so 286, 286. Let's record that. You guys have been doing a great job figuring out the modern numerals. I think all of our practice has really helped, and I'm so grateful for that. Let's look at our calendar collector today. That's where we're going to spend the bulk of our time. Today, with it being the 15th day of school for September, we need to add our 15th 6-inch piece and also update our recording sheet. So here we go. 15th piece. So, without looking at our recording sheet, based on the patterns that we've seen and that we've discussed together, what do you think is going to be our feet? If it's day 15 and we know one six inch piece is worth a half of a foot, good thinking. How about yards? If one six inch piece is one sixth of a yard and today's day 15, you got it. Let's record that. Since our other sheet was full, I went ahead and started a new one, but hopefully we're able to do it fairly easily because you guys have figured out the pattern. So for the 15th day, and I am going to make that just a little smaller, for the 15th day, how many inches do we have? 15 times 16, how might we figure that out? Good, we could do 10 times 6 and then 5 times 6 because we're trying to figure out 15 times 6, not 15 times 16. I think I made a mistake earlier. So 15 times 6, we could break 15 down into 10 plus 5, which would be 10 times 6 plus 5 times 6. Well, 10 times 6 is 60. And 5 times 6 is 30. So 15 times 6 is 
90 inches. Good. I bet if I showed you the other recording sheet, you would have been able to just add six inches to what we had yesterday. But I wanted to make sure you really understood how to figure out the answer. So let's talk about the feet then. Just a second ago, I asked, how many feet would there be if you know today's day 15? You got it. 15 halves. Absolutely correct. But now I want to write that as a mixed number. That means with a whole number and a fraction. So how many whole feet do we have? Right, seven whole feet. Our 14th marker yesterday made seven feet. But we still have another half, so we can't just write seven. It'd have to be seven and a half. Very good. Now let's tackle the yards. How many yards do we have? Right, I could put we have 15 sixths because we indeed do. We added our 15th one sixth size piece today. But how many total yards do we have? I know we have a full yard. At least one full yard. Right, we actually have two full yards. So let's write that. We have two yards, but then we have some left over. Let's look at it just to refresh your memory. Here it is. Our two full yards. And then we have three more. So that would be right, two yards and three sixths, or we could write that as two and a half. Very good. Okay, well today we're gonna be doing a workbook page revolving around our calendar collector and what we've learned so far, what we already know about inches, feet, and yards. So get out your number corner journal and open it up to page five. We're gonna work through this together. All right, here it is. Are you there? I'm gonna make myself a little smaller so you can really see the problems here. Okay, looks like we have some conversions to do. And I think you guys can do it because we've worked so hard this whole month on understanding our calendar collector and converting our inches to feet and our feet to yards. So, blank inches are equal to one foot. You guys know this. How many inches are in a foot? Yeah, six inches in a foot. Very good. So I'm gonna put my six here. Well, then it says blank feet are equal to one yard. I think you guys know this one too. How many feet are in a yard? You got it, three feet in a yard. Okay, now it's asking for how many inches are in a yard. So I think we're gonna have to perform an operation to figure that out. We know that there's six inches in one, ooh, Ms. Tramiel made a mistake. Are there six inches in one foot? No. There's 12 inches in a foot. Silly me. There's six inches in half of a foot. Thanks for catching my mistake. I'm sorry about that. So if there are 12 inches in one foot, 12, this one is gonna represent 12, okay? But there are three feet in a yard, so that means 12 inches, 12 inches, 12 inches, or 12 times three. How many inches are in one yard? Yeah, 36. You got it. Okay, we're moving really quickly with this. I'm so excited. That means you guys have gotten this down pat. So that's a good thing. So number four, how many inches are equal to one and a half yards? How could we figure that out? Yeah, so 36 inches are in one yard. Well, how many inches are in half of a yard? Half of 36, guys. 
right? 18 inches. 18 inches would be in half of a yard. So 36 plus 18 gives us how many inches? What is that? 54, you got it, 54 inches. All right, look at number five and choose your answer, which is most likely to be the height of a first grader. Good. That's exactly what I was thinking. Definitely not 40 feet. Miss Tremell is only 5 feet 1 inch, so they can't be 40 feet. They'd have to be at least 40 inches. And since it says height, we couldn't have chosen pounds because that's weight. And then miles is a distance, so 40 inches makes the most sense. How about number 6? Try that one on your own. Okay, so which unit of measure would work best for measuring the distance from your classroom to the school office? All right, we would probably want to choose a larger unit, so maybe not inches this time. So what could we choose? Good, yards. Would we want to choose miles? Probably not. A mile is going to be a lot farther than just from your classroom to the school office. Okay, we have one more. Read that silently to yourself really quickly. All right, think about the critical information that's needed to solve this problem. It says Freddie Frog jumped nine inches more than Jimmy Jr. And Jimmy Jr. jumped 27 inches. I'm gonna underline that. Nine inches more, and he jumped 27. You gotta focus on what the question is asking because it says how many feet. So we have to do a conversion there. All right, so first step is 27 plus 9 inches, because he jumped 9 inches more, which equals what? Right, 36, so she jumped 36 inches. Let's use what we did earlier to figure out how many feet that might be. Well, Right, they're 36 inches in a yard, but we want to know how many feet. Good, did you say three feet? You're right, it is three feet because there are 36 inches in three feet. Good job. Since you guys are so good with measurement conversions, I have a few other questions for you. How many inches do you think we would have collected if we had 24 days of school in September? Right, we'd have to do six times 24. Well, how would we solve that? Good, we could do six times 20 and then six times four. So what would I have? How many inches? One hundred forty four inches, yeah. Six times twenty is one hundred twenty. Six times four is twenty four. One hundred twenty plus twenty four is one hundred forty four inches. Okay, well, how about this one? What if I had twenty nine days? That's really good thinking. I could do six times 30 
and then take away a group of six. So, how many inches would I have? Hundred seventy four. You got it. Six times thirty is one hundred eighty. If I take away a group of six, I'd have one seventy four. Good thinking. One last question. This time, this is a challenge. It's a measurement conversion. How many feet are in fifty three inches? I'll say it again. How many feet are in 53 inches? Right, there are 12 inches and a foot. So how many sets of 12 can you get in 53? Right, four full feet with how many left over? You got it. Four feet with five inches left over. Last one. Well, how many inches then are in six and one third of a foot? So now we have to take our 12 inches and split it into thirds. Right, so we do six times 12 plus one third of a foot. Well, what is one third of a foot? Yeah, four inches. And so six times 12 is 72 plus four is 76 inches. You guys did an awesome job today. That's gonna conclude Number Corner. Have a great rest of your Monday. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.